Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to this online service from Bishopton Parish Church. I take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you, those who are watching or listening from home, from Bishopton, or from down south, or up north, or those overseas. I also know that we are welcome this morning the residents from Ailsa Lodge, who join us on Sunday mornings via the online service. I'm delighted to have your company wherever you are and at whatever time of the day that you join us. And I do hope and pray that this will be a time of blessing as we worship God together. This week we continue to meditate in the Old Testament book of the Psalms and we're going to be looking at Psalm 8 and the psalmist David proclaims in the opening verses, O Lord, our God, your greatness is seen in all the world. What a great week we've had and what lovely beauty we have seen around us, the sun shining, revealing the pleasures and beauties of summer season. And we commence our worship today by reflecting on these words in hymn 181, for the beauty of the earth. Let, let's lift our voices together as we praise and worship God. Hymn 181, for the beauty of the earth. Let's come before God in prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty Heavenly Father, we gather today from our separate homes and dwelling places. 
And while we may be in different buildings, we're united in our love for you and your promise that nothing can separate us or divide us from this love. We come together to praise you, to worship and to thank you for the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the sky, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. We thank you for each new day, each new day an opportunity to see your hand at work and to rejoice in all that you have given to us. Father God, we thank you for the world in which you have placed us and for the beautiful things that surround us, the things we can see, hear, touch, taste and smell. We thank you for this lovely time of the year and the assortment of colours in our gardens, parks and countryside. We praise you for the mountains and the hills, the streams and the rivers, for the plants and the animals, for the fruit and the flowers, for the food and the water, which not only quenches our thirst, but waters our land. Father God, while we give so much and have so much to give thanks for, we confess that sometimes we are slow to say the word, thank you, to you or to others. We can get so caught up in other things that we fail to see the beauty around us or appreciate the little acts of kindness. We're quick to get upset or blame others or you when things don't go the way that we want them to. Help us to refocus our minds and hearts and to see your goodness in others and in the world that you have created for us to enjoy. Loving God, we give thanks for our families, our friends and our freedom, things that we often took for granted before COVID, but now we appreciate so much more. Heavenly Father, quell our anxieties and control our frustrations when things don't go the way that we wish they could go, or when we can't meet with the people we want to be with. And as we slowly return to a new normal, help us to be more caring, compassionate and patient with individuals. And as Christians, may we shine your light for all to see and to help this world be a brighter and happier place. Hear this our prayer, Lord which we make in and through the name of Jesus, who taught his first disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading today is from Psalm 8, and this whole psalm will be read to us by Stuart Campbell. Let us hear the word of God. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Your praise reaches up to the heavens. It is sung by children and babies. You are safe and secure from all your enemies. You stop anyone who opposes you. When I look at the sky which you have made, at the moon and the stars which you set in their places, what is man that you think of him? Mere man that you care for him. Yet you made him inferior only to yourself. You crowned him with glory and honour. You appointed him ruler over everything you made. You placed him over all creation, sheep and cattle and the wild animals too, the birds and the fish and the creatures in the seas. O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. Amen. Amen, and may God bless to us this reading from his holy word. Thank you, Stuart. Most days on my mobile phone, I get a photograph, a 
A picture that I've taken previously on the phone was a message, a memory to look back on. This week I've had several pictures of a holiday that Julie and I took a couple of years ago to Tenerife. And as part of that trip, we went up Mount Teed for an evening of stargazing. Julie wasn't too happy at being dragged away from the warm sunny coast and going up into the mountain by minivan. And as the temperature dropped as we ventured high up into this natural habitat, the scenery of the coast disappeared and was replaced by trees and rocks and eventually clouds. We had to wait until it got dark and this was a wonderful experience, watching the sun go down from high up on this high mountain top, above the clouds and watching the wonderful scenery below as the light changed. I've never experienced anything so beautiful. Then as the sky became darker, the stars started to emerge and our guides were able to name the stars and the planets and give us a lesson in astronomy. As soon as it started to talk about, or they started to talk about light years from Earth, I was lost in the science. But it didn't stop me from appreciating the wonder of what I was able to see. Like me, I'm sure that you've all experienced one of those awesome moments when something in nature takes away your breath, when you can only marvel at the beauty of creation, be it a tiny butterfly or the first smile of a grandchild. In Psalm 8, David, the author, takes time to stop and to reflect on creation, all that he can see around him, and to thank God for all that he has made. This is a beautiful psalm, a short psalm. It's a psalm that Jesus quoted from several times in his teaching, and so did the Apostle Paul in his letters to the early church. David commences the psalm with the opening words, O Lord, our God, your greatness is seen in all the world. This wasn't just a proclamation, but a declaration by David. God is sovereign. He's above all things. In our modern language, we don't capture the true emphasis of the statement. But in the original Hebrew, the text, the original Hebrew text, the word that Lord, that David used with, meant God, the creator, creator of the world, Elohim. And David acknowledged in this opening statement that God was the creator, but he wasn't an aloof God, but refers to him personally as our Lord. In these ancient times when this psalm was written, the people worshipped many gods. And these gods were seen as beings who were to be worshipped and served by humanity. Yet David speaks of the one true transcendent God, God our Lord. Your greatness is seen in all the world. David again in the modern translation doesn't quite capture the meaning of the original text. The King James Version is probably much in keeping to David's proclamation. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Or as the NIV translates, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And you can feel the wonder and awe in these words, just like I could feel the wonder and awe at looking up at the night sky in Tenerife. The psalmist declares, when I look at the sky, which you have made, and the moon and the stars, and you can almost picture David looking up at the night sky, just like each one of us has done on numerous occasions. And despite the time lag of thousands of years, it would be the, roughly the same vista that we would see today. Psalm 8 also has another special attribute, one that not a lot of people know about. And this was the first psalm that was read in space. 
52 years ago, on the 16th of July 1969, the crew of Apollo 11 left Kennedy Space Center in America on board a space rocket that was to take them to the moon. Over the week, there was great excitement as the spacecraft orbited the moon before making its landing on the 20th of July, 1969. The world watched and listened as grainy black and white images were transmitted to television sets and millions of people all over the world watched as Neil Armstrong took his first tentative steps on the surface of the moon. And some of you may have been fortunate to have watched this and remember this special occasion and those words declared by Neil Armstrong, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong was joined by Buzz Aldridge and together they collected samples from the surface of the moon and then they left it and travelled back to Earth. But behind they left not just the flag of the United States, but a small silicon disk on which were embedded the goodwill messages of over 73 world leaders of the time, including a message from the Vatican and from Pope John Paul VI, whose handwritten message were the words of Psalm 8. Next time you look up at the moon, just think that somewhere on the surface of that planet are the words of Psalm 8. Neil Armstrong may have been the first man to walk on the moon and may well be remembered for his iconic statement of one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind. But his co-astronaut, Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon, will be remembered as a man who read Psalm 8 in space. And I can just imagine him reading those words, especially verse 3. I look at the moon and the stars, which you set in their places, as he and his fellow astronauts sat in the space capsule and looked round at the stars and the galaxies. It must have been an incredible moment for each of them. David gazed in awe and wonder. And he poses a question, what are human beings that you think of them, mere mortals that you care for them? David is questioning his own existence. What are we human beings? But this question goes much deeper and he is fascinated and asks God why he cares about humanity. But we must put this passage into context. It was probably written by David about a thousand years before Christ's birth. And this was to do with the covenant between God and the Israelites. The promise that God would take care of them, guide them as a good shepherd, guides and looks after the sheep. Time and time again, humanity has let God down, broken his commands, but time and time again, God the Creator was there to bring back his flock to the safety of green pastures. David, the author of many of the Psalms, was also to let God down. When he was king, he gave in to temptation and the seduction of Bathsheba. He tried to cover up his son, sin of adultery, but after his plans failed, he ordered Uriah, the faithful husband of Bathsheba, to the front line where he was killed in battle. David married the pregnant Bathsheba, but he had to live with the guilt that not only had he taken another man's wife, but he was also responsible for that man's death and subsequently the death of his own child who died early in infancy. Like the lost sheep, David strayed from the path of righteousness. He got lost in the wilderness and God, 
the good shepherd, brought him back to the fold. He forgave him. And in time, David and Bathsheba had a second child, a child named Solomon, who, like his father, became a great king. What is man, David asked, that you care for him? He was talking about that special relationship between God and humanity. How wonderful it is to know that God loves each one of us. And he loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus into the world to be our saviour, the redeemer of our sins. But with this special relationship comes responsibility. And David points out that just as our heavenly father created this beautiful world for us to live in, he also made us custodians of its care. And he states, you made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All the flocks and herds, the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea. We each have a duty of care for our world. And so far we've not really taken care of the world as we should have done. We have exploited it and damaged much of our forest lands. Smoke and pollution has damaged the ozone layers, leading to climate change, which has resulted in many storms and floods and major disasters in poorer lands in our world. But global warming and the effect that it has on the sea temperature affects all of us in some way or another, unless we do something to stop the pollution and stop the destruction of the ozone layers, our planet's future is in jeopardy. On the 31st of October this year in Glasgow, COP26, the 26 UN Climate Change Conference, will hopefully take place. And this is an opportunity for delegates from all over the world to have conversations and hopefully initiate action to halt climate change. Representatives from Christian Aid, the Church of Scotland, along with other environmental campaigners will be present. And each one of us has our part to play by listening to these debates and taking forward the initiatives. To do all that we can to cut down on our waste, reduce our carbon footprint, and to support the work of Christian Aid and other environmental organisations. In these nine short verses, David proclaims the wonder of creation. He praises the greatness of the Creator and he points out the amazing love and special relationship that exists between God and humanity. But just as God loves us, and we love God, we must love the world he created and do all that we can to protect and preserve it. David concludes the psalm with the same words in which he commenced, O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. I just hope, as the words of Psalm 8 were heard far out in space, in July 1969, that they are heard once again in Glasgow later this year, and that the world listens. Amen, and may God bless to us this reflection on his word. I can think of no better hymn to help us to reflect on this psalm than hymn 154, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder
Next Sunday, we have our service here in the church at 11 a.m. And as we've been doing over the past few weeks, we plan to live stream this service and welcome not just those uh, in the church, but also to those viewing at home. I'm taking a few days off and I'm delighted that our service next Sunday will be led by Stephen Henderson. Stephen is well known to our congregation and he has now successfully completed his first year of studies in training for ministry. And I know that we will all be in good hands next week as, lead, as Stephen leads the service. Pastoral care will be covered during my uh, absence by Anok and anyone looking for pastoral support should contact Douglas Hope, our session clerk. To comply with the regulations of track and protect, as well as the numbers allowed within the church building, we are looking uh, for people to book for the service on, uh, for next Sunday, and this can be done uh, online via the church website, uh, which is accessible from uh, today at lunchtime right through to next Saturday or by calling the Cornerstone and speaking to Ruby uh, on a Thursday afternoon, or morning, I should say, between 10 and 12 noon. Next Sunday, we hope to be able to offer tea and coffee after the service, and we plan to use disposable cups, uh, but those who attend may wish to bring their own cups or mugs uh, for, to, to be used. Social distancing rules will be in place, and it's hoped that this can be done safely indoors or outdoors, depending on the weather. But this is an opportunity that offers individuals the chance to, to chat and to gather together. The following Sunday is the 18th of July. We have a car park service and the, uh, as the regulations relax over the summer, I very much look forward to being able to welcome back more and more folks who have not yet managed to uh, come to church. And I do invite you to come along and to try one of these outdoor summer services. I realise that they're not safe and uh, suitable for all, uh, and safety and well-being are still paramount. But um, I think you will find that the, the car park services offer individuals the opportunity to either stay in the car or to bring a little seat and to be able to enjoy the fellowship of being together. I wish to thank all the tech team who continue to make these online services available and work throughout the summer. Let's come before God in our prayers for others. Let's pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, by your hand, our world was created. And what a beautiful world it is. May we never stop appreciating the wonder of it, or taking time to think about all the beauty that surrounds us. May each one of us be good stewards and caretakers of our world, and do everything that we can to minimise our waste, our contribution to climate change, our impact on pollution. May we be mindful of the organisations that are meeting to discuss and adopt new ways of creating power or energy without the devastating impact on our planet's fragile ecosystem and further damage to our environment. Help us to work towards a world where all can enjoy the beauty and see just how great thou art. Loving God, in this time of global pandemic, we also bring to you our concerns for our families, our community, our nation and our world. Today we pray for the millions of men, women and children affected by the COVID virus all over the world for the sick and in need of medical care, and for the hospitals and the staff in so many lands that are overwhelmed by the demand and responsibility placed upon them. We pray for organisations like Christian Aid and UNICEF that are actively working in lands where there is limited health care or endemic poverty, and we ask that your blessing be on their work. 
We pray that you will guide our world leaders to work to tackle this pandemic, to distribute the vaccines to all lands, and to ensure all means of support is given to those in need. Heavenly Father, we pray for those in our own community who have been affected by COVID, those in hospital or recovering at home, those who are left with long-term health issues. We pray for your healing to be on each one of them and with their families. Caring Lord, we pray for those who are struggling financially, for those who have lost their jobs, or those who are still living with the threat of redundancy, anxiously waiting to see what the future holds. We remember at this time all who grieve. At a time when mourning is so difficult, where funeral services are still limited in number, and not all family and friends can attend. Today, we remember the family and friends of the victims of the Miami building collapse. Many individuals still unaccounted for and presumed dead, but still the emergency workers continue to search in the rubble, looking for hope to try and bring anything that will bring news to those who anxiously wait. Lord, comfort them and grant them your peace in this time of distress. Loving God, we have so many areas of need and concern in our world. And in the next few moments, we bring to you those who we have individually promised to pray for. Loving God, our world needs your help, your healing, your comfort, your guidance. This prayer we make in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. I would like to thank Stuart for his reading today and also to the tech team for all the work that they continue to do ensuring that we can continue to keep in touch and have worship together. A closing hymn is one that we all love, and we will certainly be having it at our outdoor service a little later today. All things bright and beautiful.
May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in our hearts, transform lives, and brighten the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and evermore. Amen. Stay well, stay safe, stay in touch. God bless.